tonight. Delta Kappa Epsilon apologizes for their offensive banner, but should they have to apologize for the hatred that comes naturally to them? Plus, a new study shows sugar is more dangerous than fats, but when the two put, come together, they equal a heavenly coma at Krispy Kreme. Also, what the hell is going on in the world? Between Isis, Ray Rice, and Miley Cyrus' new bong art collection, everything is falling apart. Oh, MJ, who cares? We have the Apple Watch now. All this and my harassing emails to Tim Cook right now on The Funyun. Welcome to The Funyun, the Tiger TV of the news world. I'm Logan Anderson. And I'm MJ Hernandez, and I apologize for that offensive banner I hung from the frat house. LSU Dean of Students Dr. Casey White announced this week that writing on the success of his new book, Duck Dynasty Patriarch Phil Robertson will be serving as a visiting scholar to the university. The television star will be offering a 4,000 level religion class on the history of converting terrorists to Christianity. Robertson promises that if students couldn't convince a militant to accept Jesus Christ as their savior at the end of class, then they should enroll in his 3,000 level ROTC class, eliminating extremists. Attendance in the class is expected to be low given recent pressure by university professors protesting the classes, but they're probably all radical sleeper agents anyways. It's that time of year again, LSU, the time when freshman women straight out of high school feel compelled to rebel against society and their emotionally absent fathers. According to reports from Yik Yak, freshman girls have been experimenting with a fashion trend we haven't seen in more than a decade, nose rings. The venerated nose ring, a staple among cyberpunks and hippie chicks from the late 90s, are returning to the septums of teens for their ease of use and effective daddy piss off -itude. While the wild piercing has been rising in popularity, it still has a long way to go before it reaches the same levels of foot tattoos and lower back tattoos of your boyfriend's name. Bros with tribal arm tats tell the Funyun that nose ring piercings are pretty hot. Some breaking news at this hour. Police are on the search tonight for a band of gypsies, suspects in the kidnapping of Reveille opinion writer Joe Goebbels. According to eyewitness reports, Goebbels was last seen Thursday morning being shoved into a highly decorated caravan by various tramps and thieves. Goebbels' article on the damage to society caused by gypsy kidnappings of young boys for ritual sacrifice received a very negative response from the gypsy community. Reveille opinion artists later responded to the kidnapping with a wide range of opinions. One writer criticized the use of the term gypsy as offensive and blasted Goebbels for allowing himself to be apprehended, further perpetuating stereotypes. Another writer praised Goebbels for his bravery during the kidnapping to show that all gypsies also kidnap grown men too. Baton Rouge City officials announced this week that they just don't care anymore. Sources within City Hall say that between Baton Rouge's lackluster downtown to rampant poverty and continued strains between minorities and the police, city leaders are so done with trying to run the city. Metro Councilwoman Ronnie Edwards, who asked not to be named, said this quote, it's exhausting trying to get this thing, it's, tr it's exhausting trying to get this thing to work. I've concluded that it's not even worth it. While the city government has not announced plans to dissolve itself, many officials expect it to gradually fall apart and sell itself to ExxonMobil. Residents are advised to buy a boat as the rising sea level is probably going to wash us all out anyway. Coming up next, Obama vows to destroy ISIS. When will his oppressive regime against Egyptian goddesses ever end? Plus, we take the Olive Garden never-ending pasta pass out for a spin, and boy, is that rock bottom for me. That and much more after the break. According to a 2014 study on the state of the nation's hotness, Americans have just plain given up on caring, thanks to an increase in Photoshop. Adobe's popular photo editing suite has become ingrained in popular culture, from fashion magazines to teens on Instagram. Dolores Hart, 52, says that the expenses needed to look younger, like tightening her neck and removing excess skin from her eyelids, are simply astronomical in comparison to Photoshop. Hart says she'll continue to doctor her Facebook photos after a previous bad experience with a cooking oil and cement butt lift in Guatemala. Chick-fil-A owner S. Truett Cathy died Monday at the age of 93, far surpassing the life expectancy of his customers. Fans of the franchise across the country agreed to fast this coming Sunday and attend their local Chick-fil-A restaurant the following morning for a chicken biscuit and tater top memorial service. 
Many patrons will also be holding campouts outside various locations, waiting for the white smoke from the grill to rise, signifying a new successor has been chosen. It's not known if the passing of Kathy will result in changes for the company's conservative political stances, but members of the LGBT community agree that the food will probably still taste so darn good. This story brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We close on Sundays. Just after the discovery of the one McDonald's location whose ice cream machine is still working, researchers at the American Frozen Dairy Labs have discovered the sole remaining fully functional icy machine. Located inside a Dayton, Ohio Circle K, the machine offered five different flavors, including wild cherry, Coca-Cola, and Jamaican rum bubblegum. After careful analysis by scientists, it was discovered that each of the flavors retained perfect frozen consistency simultaneously. Head researcher, doc, head researcher Dr. Sarah Richards explained that not only is it rare to find a machine where even one flavor functions, but to find one with five flavors working perfectly was clearly a miracle. Now, here with us in the studio to discuss everyone's favorite uncomfortable topic is Wesley Jamal Fleming with The Race Report. Wesley? Hey there, everyone. Welcome to this week's Race Report. I'm Wesley Jamal Fleming, and let's get this over with. In national racist news, Bruce Levingson, owner of the NBA team, the Atlanta Hawks, was in the news this week because he sold his controlling shares of the team recently after a racist email he wrote resurfaced. In the email, Levinson states that, quote, my theory is that the black crowd scared away the whites and there are simply not enough affluent black fans to build a significant season ticket base. Levinson goes on to complain that the high African-American attendance always showed up late to the games and were negatively affecting merchandise sales. Wow, that's pretty unbelievable stuff there, Wesley. I mean, what else did he do in that email? CC the Ku Klux Klan, am I right? Yeah, thanks, MJ. That was hilarious. Uh, in more local racist news, Michael Ellsbury, a Baton Rouge police officer, resigned last Thursday after sending a racially charged text message to other officers referring to African Americans stated, quote, they are nothing but a bunch of monkeys. And I wish someone would pull a Ferguson on them and take them out. I hate looking at those African monkeys at work. I enjoy arresting those thugs with their saggy pants. Former officer Ellsbury has yet to be reached for comments. Oh man, I can only imagine the emoji use in that conversation, Wesley. Yeah, that's uh, real, real funny stuff, MJ. Well, that's all the racist news I feel like talking about this week. Follow us on Twitter at Funny and Gang if you feel like getting super depressed. For The Race Report, I'm Wesley Jamal Fleming. Thanks for that report, Wesley. When we come back, I'll tell you a secret that you have to promise not to tell anyone. Plus, the secret to a long-lasting relationship is not taking the elevator together. That and much more after the break. Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, oh no. no. This is so sad. J-Law was on top of the world just a few days ago, and ever since Joan Rivers had to go and die, yeah. she's quickly been forgotten. I think... I'm Spencer Lachula here with Zach Pearson. And we're going to play war, and the loser has to chug this bottle of syrup. Chug them off. Dos. Tres. Oof. Uno, dos, tres. Uno, dos, tres. Uno, dos, tres. Uno, dos, tres. Let's do this. One, two, three. All right, I'm not counting anymore. <laughs> I just want to see how much is in this thing for when I'm chugging it. One, two, three. All right. Better be knowing that he shuffled this deck, so. Hey, bro, I didn't. Whatever. One, two, three. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. 
Don't call it a comeback. I never left. One, two, three. Oh, oh God. This so is it, bro. This, this is, is it. This is for everything. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. Where, <laughs> where do I take my victory lap? Do I jog around this whole room or what? I, I, yes, you can, bro, because you ain't going to have syrup. This has been Spencer Lachelet with the Funyun. Make sure to visit Funyun.com for more funny stuff. And come back, because we should have Zach on here again, hopefully. Not in this situation. Continuing the winning streak. Let's follow the kids in Africa. Ooh. This has got to be terrible. I'm so thankful that this turned out in my favor. If it helps you in any bit, you're about halfway, so. I'm joking, I'm joking. You're all stuck. Oh, man. Hey, props though, because there's no way I could have done it. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. That's golden. That's golden. Dude, that was the worst thing ever.